Hey guys, today I'm gonna to share 10 things you may not know about your DJI Mini 2. That's actually way more than 10 things, but I'm gonna call it 10. Anyhow, let's get right to it. With the flick of a switch, you can embed telemetry data into your Mini 2's video files. While in video mode, go into settings, camera, and turn on video subtitles. Once you do that, flight and camera data will be embedded in a subtitle track in all your video files until you turn it off. Camera settings include aperture, shutter speed, ISO, exposure value, and digital zoom, while telemetry data includes GPS coordinates, distance, height, horizontal, and vertical speed. You can access this data using a free online extraction tool or an application like VLC. If you wanna know more about it, I did a whole video on it for the Mini 1, which works exactly the same way. Link is up here and in the description. One of my favorite remote control features going back to my early DJI Spark days is Flight Pause. On the Mini 2's controller, Flight Pause shares the same button with Return to Home. Press and hold that button to engage Return to Home or use a quick tap to immediately pause flight. Flight Pause will not only override a full throttle joystick position, it will also immediately stop all automated flight modes, including Return to Home. So it is definitely a good one to keep in your back pocket for those moments when you just need your Mini to stop doing whatever it's doing. You can start and stop the Mini 2's motors with a joystick movement called the Combination Stick Command or CSC. Pull both joysticks down to the inner or outer corners until the propeller starts spinning, then release the stick simultaneously. Repeat the same move to stop the motors, or if you use the default joystick mode, holding down the left joystick will also stop the motors. Now, there is one more trick I like to call the nudge. While holding the Mini in your hand, if you start the motors using the Combination Stick Command, all you need to do to get the Mini to take off and hover in the air is just give it a slight upwards nudge. Of course, if you're going to do that, be very mindful of those spinning props because they will do damage. Getting the battery level of the Mini 2 or the remote can quickly be accomplished by tapping the power button on either device. If you have the two-way charging hub, inserting a battery into the hub or tapping the power button on the side will show the charge level of all batteries in the hub. Mini 1 batteries are fully compatible with the DJI Mini 2, so if you have a Mini 1, you can use those batteries in your Mini 2 for some extra flight time. Of course though, the Mini 1's batteries are much heavier than the Mini 2's, so if you do fly with them, the Mini 2 will not be a sub 250 gram drone. Mini 1 batteries are also less expensive than the Mini 2 batteries, yet provide about the same flight time. If flying with a sub 250 gram drone is not that important to you, picking up some extra Mini 1 batteries for your Mini 2 is a great way to get some extra airtime while saving a few bucks. And finally, the Mini 2's two-way charging hub charges both Mini 1 and Mini 2 batteries, and in a pinch, can also be used as a power bank to charge your other gadgets. The gimbal's normal pitch range is from 0 to 90 degrees. If you go into settings, control, and turn on allow upward gimbal rotation, you are able to tilt the gimbal up by an additional 20 degrees. Another handy gimbal trick is to set the function button to recenter gimbal by going into settings, control, and choosing button customization. I like to set a double tap to be recenter gimbal. Then when I double tap the function button, the gimbal quickly moves from zero degrees to 90 or 90 to zero, depending on the starting position. And one more trick, if you tap and hold the main DJI fly screen, a circle appears underneath your finger along with a slider showing the gimbal pitch. Sliding your finger up or down will control the pitch of the gimbal. On the main flight screen of the DJI Fly app, most of the items you see around the edges of the screen can be touched to reveal even more information. Tapping the GPS status icon reveals the number of satellites and signal strength. Tapping battery information reveals useful details, including time until return to home. Touching the system status bar allows you to adjust the return to home altitude. Touching the icon in the bottom left-hand corner will expand the map or the attitude indicator. And finally, tapping the micro SD card information toggles between number of photos or video recording time remaining and the available capacity of the SD card. 
If you want to use manual white balance to get consistent color in your video footage but are a little unsure how to get started, no problem. There is a simple trick. When you switch from auto to manual white balance, the color temperature value is reset to what the camera system thinks is the correct white balance setting for the Mini 2. You don't need to know anything about how white balance works to get a good starting value. If lighting conditions change, just switch back to auto, then back to manual to reset the white balance to current conditions. Even if the color is not 100% perfect, at least it will be consistent and that makes it so much easier to correct in post. The Mini 2 can zoom in up to four times for video and up to two times for photos. Simply tapping the zoom button toggles between the available levels of zoom. If you hold your finger on the zoom button, however, a slider appears and the zoom level can be adjusted by dragging your finger up or down to zoom in or out. An even better way to do the same thing is to hold down the function button on the remote and then use the gimbal dial to zoom in or out. This I find provides a smoother and more precise level of control. And if you combine a video zoom with forward or backwards drone movement, you can achieve the dolly zoom or vertigo effect. It takes a bit of practice to get it right, but when you do, it's a pretty cool visual effect. The Mini 2's all new controller is awesome in so many ways, but one big advantage is its large battery, which means more time flying and less time charging. It also means there's plenty of extra juice to keep your smartphone or tablet charged while flying. Just go into settings, control, and turn on phone charging to keep your device topped up while you fly. In photo mode while using auto exposure, you can set your exposure from a particular spot on the screen by touching it with your finger. Spot metering stays in effect at the selected spot until you touch it again to turn it off. Spot metering can be very useful in certain situations where you want to make sure your subject is properly exposed. And one final camera tip, when shooting photos you can choose between a 4x3 and 16x9 aspect ratio. My advice is to always use the 4x3 aspect ratio because it uses the full sensor. The 16x9 aspect ratio crops that image down to 9 megapixels. By using the 4x3 aspect ratio, you get 3 million more pixels to work with in post. And that's it for this one, guys. I hope you learned at least one new thing you didn't know before. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And yep, you guessed it. I will see you in the next one. Bye.